Yo guys, what's up? So I'm doing a, um, a 15 plus 10 and I'm using the Chestnut Air as, I don't know if you can see, but there it is on the thing, because I've got a I've got an over the board game uh, tonight and I've, my opponent's rated 1436. We've got a Sicilian and here we go. So I'm, I'm just trying to get my, um, don't have to tell it, I'm adjusting these pieces. Um, okay, so we're going Grand Prix, and I'm also recording it on the screen as well, using a special cheat. Okay, I'm not actually cheating, I haven't got um, eval and lines or anything showing. Um, so what I've done is I've just created a, a, a free account on uh, chess.com, and I've befriended myself, because chess.com won't show a live game if you're playing it on another device. Obviously, if you're playing on your phone, you can't also view it on the on the screen. Um, however, you can watch friends play. So I've befriended myself, and um, so now I've got it in 3D and 2D in front of me, and this seems to be working. It's all right. There's just a couple of things about the chestnut. You know, one is that you can't slide your pawns. You know, if you want to go two squares, because it will detect the first square, so you've got to be careful about that one. Other than that, it's pretty cool. It's on the small side. It's going to be, it's a lot smaller than the um, board I'll be playing with this evening. It's like tournament size, so it's like you know, twenty inches or something across. This is only about thirteen inches, but it's still three D. Okay. So I've also got it on my phone here. So my phone is showing the game. The board is showing the game, and my spare. Oh, hello. Okay, so what's gone on here? He's moved a piece for the second time in the opening. I don't think I'm worried about him taking my knight because I'll then recapture with my queen, and we're all good. This is not a usual move in the Grand Prix. So my thoughts are pawn to d3, just solidify, because I can always I can always play bishop e2 as well. You know, you always worry about your light squared bishop. What are you going to do with this? It's not one of the big challenges because normally you create this light squared pawn chain c2 d3 e4. Um, I think if I bring my bishop out to like c4 or b5, it's likely to get kicked back. So my instinct just says pawn to d3. And I'll push that because it's only going one square. Can only go one square. Is there any tea in the glass? No. So here already, I'm starting to feel like my opponent has given away a tempo. Because I, I don't know. I mean, I, I could, I could take the knight and then C takes, but I don't really want that pawn on my half of the board if I can prevent it. Um. Actually, also bishop e3 now is a, is a move. Because then I've got two attackers on the knight. And if he tries to push e5, I can, I can capture. So we've got pawn to d6. This is interesting, but I'm, I need a really good reason not now to play bishop e3. So if bishop e3 now and e5, f takes e5... He's lost central control, so I'm going with this move. It's great. I'm seeing it instantly on the screen as well. This is so cool. It's like the tournament projection up there. So this might be a way that, that people may, may cheat sometimes is to, is to have a second browser. Um, because when you're watching somebody else play, you can stick lines on. You can just put lines on and have stockfish running. It really does it for you. Okay. What's it saying there? Network. Unstable. Gosh. He doesn't want to know. Unstable network pressures. Okay. Queen B6. <clears throat> So a big question is now, do you allow 
opponent to capture on b2. Let's say I... T no, in fact, I can't take the knight with my knight. That's that's clear, because after pawn takes, I'm in a pawn fork. Um, I'm inclined to play rook b1. Just gets out of trouble. Um, or b3 is also an idea. But b3 would have been smarter before I move my bishop, because then I can fianchetta my bishop on b2. Um, knight a4 is a move here as well because um, I'm not going to draw it on the board, but knight a4 hits the queen and defends b2 in one fell swoop. However, it's sticking my knight on the rim, and so that's only something that you want to do if it's either necessary, forced, or advantageous. I don't think it is. I don't see a massive issue with rook b1. Um, so it, let's say knight a4, right? Where's the queen going to go? She's got a bunch of options. I mean, it literally just pushing forward to b5, and now my knight has a problem. But then I can push b3 anyway. And play rook b1. Well, rook b1 actually undefends my other pawn. Not that his light squared bishop's a threat at this point in time. Mm. So b3 is fine. See, the phone's updated, the screen's updated. So, interestingly, I hit my... So we're about 11 days into the Big Fat Challenge now. Hit my Blitz peak today, hitting over 1560. And then, as is my habit, I decided that I must be the king of the world and completely invincible at chess and then lost about nine games in a row. So I've gone back to about 15-5 or something like that, 1,500 in, uh, in Blitz. So my, my rapid score is now ahead of my Blitz score again. But that's really good. To hit 15-16 in Blitz is cool. Okay. A4, A5 might even be a thing, hitting the queen, but the queen's got B4 square. I'm trying to look at the 3D version, not the 2D version. That knight's a bit of a pest, actually. Because it's stopping my queen from going to E2, for example. I, I can play bishop E2, castles, queen E1. And try and take advantage of the fact that he's playing too much over the queen side. And he's done nothing with the king side. No development on the king side whatsoever yet. So if I can get my queen like on the g-file, then that often has the effect of tying the king's bishop down to the protection of the g-pawn. So I think I think bishop... Okay, so... All right, so he's moved that. Okay. I'm going to do the same. I'm going to play my bishop to e2. We're both 11.50 in time. This is Okay. My light squared bishop is definitely a weak piece here. But you never know. It could find its way out to h5. Okay, he's having a wriggle around, look. So actually, yeah, if that knight should move now, my knight on c3 is now vulnerable because the move b2 to b3 undefended my knight. So is it a thought to like capture with the bishop? Capture with the bishop, he takes with his bishop, but then I can take his bishop. Okay. I take... Pawn takes, I'm happy, he's just blunted his own bishop. Then my knight is actually slightly short of places to go. I might have to go to a4, which is not pretty. Um, obviously, taking with the knight is no good because pawn takes and we're in a pawn fork. But what he's threatening now is like knight takes knight or knight takes bishop so knight on f3 or bishop on e2 and then that comes with check if he takes the knight for example i recapture the knight but then bishop takes the knight on c3 and that's a fork on king and rook so we can't be having that kind of nonsense um having said that you know i i need to defend that knight anyway 
So even if, for example, I moved the rook, or even if I castled, um, knight takes knight, I recapture, and then my knight is undefended. So this is, you know, all kind of arguing that maybe, um, maybe b3 was not the right move. Maybe rook, rook b1 was just better. So what can we do? I mean, bishop takes knight is a thought. We should consider that. Bishop takes knight, but then bishop takes... I think we'd have to trade off there, actually. Then he gets a pawn towards the center. Um, I mean, the only alternative really is something like bringing my bishop back to d2. He takes my knight. I grab him. So let's think this through. Bishop takes knight. Pawn takes I don't like. Okay, bishop d2 it is. The other thing is that I had a little bit of a struggle connecting the chestnut this morning because um, I, I haven't played on it in a little while. I tried to go in to Bluetooth settings on my phone and just find it and connect, and it doesn't do that. You have to use the app. You have to connect via the app because it just doesn't find it as a discoverable device. Okay, so I'm kind of cramped at this point, but I'm not unhappy. Whatever his knight does now, I can simply recapture. If he takes my light squared bishop, I'm delighted. So who am I playing tonight? I think it's wood seat C from memory. Where is this flag? Kazakhstan. I don't get many players from Kazakhstan, but... The best singer in the world comes from Kazakhstan, in my humble opinion. If you want to blow your mind, if you've never heard of Dimash Kudaibergin, check him out. Just put Dimash in YouTube. He sang a song on a Chinese talent show, getting over like 10 years ago now. Um, and uh, it's been viewed like 10 million times. It's incredible. So if you haven't seen it, check it out. And then you can also get, I've been very addicted to watching reaction videos as well, of people seeing this guy sing, hearing him sing for the first time. His range is insane. He goes from like a, a baritone, that's between tenor and bass, he can sing operatic baritone, operatic tenor, operatic alto, soprano, and even whistle tones up at the top range as well. Really, really crazy talented. But it's not just not just talent, it's not just the physiology, but you know, the guy's trained from being a small, small boy in uh, bel canto, so classical Italian uh, operatic style. Okay, we have pawn to g6. Um, if I take knight, if knight takes knight, bishop takes, not really liking that very much. If I castle short now, I am putting my, my king in line with black's queen. So there could be ideas later on about pushing the pawn with a discovered check. But I feel like I need to do it. So we do it. And um, I'm thinking King H1 quite soon. So opponent, we both took over two minutes, two minutes 20 on our... In fact, this is weird. Move seven, we both took one minute 40.1 seconds. That's insane. That doesn't really happen, does it? Then on move nine, we both took two minutes 20. I took two minutes 21, he did two, two minutes 28. What the hey?
What fresh nonsense is this? Surely I can just take with the B pawn. And then rook b1, push the queen away. So he's setting up a check, actually, isn't he? That, that's the thing. He's pushed the pawn first, and then he's preparing to move the knight with check, which is pretty free. So, for example, he's got knight takes f3, double check, and then I have to move the king to the corner. So we are not having any of that nonsense. We are going to move the king to h1. Like I said, now now that the pawns move forward, I also noticed that if I move my bishop from d2 to e3, that then pins the knight, which is pretty cool. And he can't now move that knight, because you see my queen and my rook on f1 and my king on h1 are all on light squares, and the knight's currently on a dark square. That means that when the knight moves, it's got to move from a dark square to a light square, because knights change color complex every time they move. So that knight cannot move and attack any of my more important pieces. It could attack the rook on a1 with knight takes c2, but that just drops the knight, so it doesn't matter. And now I'm inclined to take on c4 if I get the chance. But if he takes, I'll take back with a pawn, and I've got semi-open a file for my rook. That's all right. But this early knight move onto onto black's fifth rank, you know, onto the fourth rank is uh, is interesting. I've not really had to deal with it much before. Knight d5 isn't possible. Okay, so he's taken. That's fine. Um, Bishop takes it, it gets it out of the knight's way. Oh, it's nice that I can hear birds singing outside. It's like the first sign of spring, even though it's mid-January. Okay. Question is, will my light square bishop have more prospects on the diagonal it's on now, or on the, the B1H7 diagonal? I do not know. I think pawn takes looks strong, um, simply because I'm capturing towards the center. It means there isn't any longer a pawn on c2 that the knight is looking at. I can even just trade off and take him with a pawn. Okay, and all is well. So this is a 15 plus 10, we're both down to seven minutes, or under eight minutes. He's on 747 now. So I've got, I've got the, uh, the board. I mean, this just looks like chess.com on there, right? So I've got the, I've got the timings on here as well, but it's, uh, I've got it bigger on, on the, the screen in front of me. Okay. Hmm. Now I'm thinking, Okay, knight takes knight, queen takes knight, d4, discovery on the queen, and I'm occupying the center like a like a, a badass. Also, hmm. I was gonna say, is, is bishop's undefended on f6, but it's not, the knight is still currently defending it. But you've gotta be a bit suspicious about his, his structure on the king side. I, I, don't, I don't like that, my king is nice and snug. Perfectly safe in the corner there. I can't attack the queen with bishop e3. It's not defended there. But yeah, I'm, I'm just going to go ahead and, and trade off here. Queen's got to take back. And then it's like my bishop's coming to life a bit. And suddenly my my pawns, you see my Grand Prix pawns with e4 and f4, now starting to look quite dominant. And the fact now that black has not castled is looking dubious to say the least also wouldn't we notice the queen and the king are on the same diagonal i can't really why is it disconnected 
didn't see that did not see that and there goes a rook <sighs> but surely that's not the cleverest move because hang on if after queen takes bishop i'm now looking at their other rook surely And that's the problem with these, you see these, putting all these pawns on light squares on the king's side. <sighs> it's got to be done, isn't it? It's got to be done. So right now, if queen takes, I'm temporarily down in exchange, but then I win the rook. And that is just, <sighs> that's dismal then for black. Because the, the knight's pinned, he's going to have to play king f8. I can bring my knight in. It'd be nice if my bishop on e2 was defended, which it ain't. F6, hell's teeth. <sighs> okay, this was just... I mean, look, complete honesty, I did not see the, the, the hanging rook, but this is tragic for black, I think. He's down one pawn in material right now, but that's not the point. The point is his king's stuck in the middle of the board. Um, thoughts include a4. Pawn to d3... For from d3 to d4 also defends the knight with a discovered defense by my light squared bishop. I quite like that. I like the look of that. Uh, knight f to d4. It's also playable. Then that can be kicked, can't it? With like e5, fe, de, or fe, and then I get kicked, and then the knight is vulnerable. So I kind of like a4. I think, you know, use a pawn. Use the cheapest possible resource you've got to do the job, or retreat the knight. I can retreat it to d4. It's defended by queen and knight. <clears throat> I kind of like having it up in my opponent's face. Let's leave it there. You rub it on his face now. <laughs> Smell my knight. Go on, sniff it. <sighs> Opponent is 1436 rapid. And I don't know. I don't think he's playing his best game. Okay, I can't hit the queen. I can trade my knight for a pawn. What's the point? Queen takes back. So knight back to c3, at least it's safe there. I'm going to just sit back and laugh at our opponent. Okay, he grabs pawn. Missed that as well. But this is piecemeal chess. Okay, my first thought is e5, bust open the center. Everything is actually defended. Notice that in this configuration, my two bishops defend my knights and my two knights defend my bishops as well. Isn't that interesting? Okay. Yeah, I think, I think we, just, we just bust open the center. I'm expecting takes. Oh, he's... he's the thing is that um, the pawn on d6 is undefended anyway. If if he, say, pushes that and I capture on f6, knight takes, then I move my knight and I've, I've, my queen is then lining up with his knight on f6 and his, and his rook. Yeah, so 
we have takes. I think material's actually equal now. So that's five eight. No, he's up. He's up a pawn. Yeah, I'm just going to take back. It's it's a no brainer that really. Okay, so what have we got? We've got six, six yeah, equal. I like, I like just handling them, you know? I mean, they, look, they're not the biggest pieces in the world. The ones we play with at a club are like twice the size, but it, the tactile nature is very nice. Okay. And now again, you see, his pawns again, all on light squares. <laughs> so, <sighs> I've actually got remarkably good coordination there. I could play even, for example, queen b1, try and trade off queens. But it's not like I'm ahead of material. I'm not ahead of material. Therefore, I need the lady on the board. The lady stays. Um, knight d4 is interesting. It hits the queen. It's on an undefended square. But should my other knight move? I don't know. Um, a5 is even a thought. No. Because if, like, queen a4 check, he blocks with his light square bishop. Um, rook b1. Where's she going? Oh, hang on. C2 is the only square. The lady's out of squares. Rook B1, Queen C2. Bishop from E2 to D1. And she's dead, I believe. No, because then I hang the D3 pawn. Oh, how about knight e1? That hangs the bishop. How about rook b2? Rook b2. Ah, 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 ah. <sighs> this is where the tactical training pays off. See, the queen came. She crossed the line, man. She crossed the line. Um, and I think she pays the price. Because I've got, I've got studies now on, on drilling trapped pieces. Easy, medium, hard. This is going to be in one of the studies. Probably hard. There we have it. Now let us double check. To put you in the middle of the square, you know. There's no end for OCD. Doesn't sleep. Yep, root B2. Don't see a problem with that. And you can probably wave the white flag because I can't see anything you can do. Desperado, why don't you come to your senses? Bosh. Okay, we are plus four materials. Opponent is now starting to speed up because he's embarrassed because he got his queen trapped. And... <sighs> is he really planning on castling? Do we want to play bishop h6 and put paid to that idea? Bishop h6, bishop g7, hit the rook, stick the bishop on f6. Looks very nice. Yeah, it's very common. Who else has done the same thing, right? You, you reach like, you win three games in a row and you go, wow, I've like broken my record. I'm, I'm the best player in the world. I'm the new Magnus. And the moment you start doing that, you then blunder queens and stuff all over the place. Okay, knight g5. 
How much time was... Oh, shit. Check. 1 minute 43, what's going on? Okay, so king has to move. I've got one attacker now on e6. I'm going to play queen b3. Okay. Blitz time. He's got to go back to e8 or g8, isn't it? I've even got queen b6. That'll do. Got to speed up now, right? 146. Look at talking to you, you put me off again. Uh, bishop f3, bishop takes b7 is a plan. This reminds me of that game I played against that kid the other week. Um, take the pawn. Okay, lining up pawns. I like lining them up. Okay, 148 still. And now I've got knight c7 fork. This is turning into a world of pain, isn't it? Oh, sorry. Uh, there, and... I think I can just give check. I can't take forever over my moves. Now, if king goes to f8, I've got queen... F5, King G8, I win the knight. I'm going to win the knight or the rook, aren't I? If the king goes to D8, I've got a discovery, but it's not brilliant. Maybe bring the other knight in. Knight 3 to D5, as opposed to knight 7 to D5. You have to specify. Well, actually, if King D8... Yeah, King D8, I can force the trade of knights anyway. That's check. You can't block. You move back, okay. And now I just take. Now, he can take with a rook. I appreciate this. Can take my other knight with a rook. But he hasn't done it. He's taken with a king instead. So now this knight comes in again with check. And we're on two minutes. I have bishop a g5 check. Well, probably not, because he's about to move. My light-squared bishop is the only one that's not having a good time. Okay, king there. Do I take the pawn? Do I have to be careful about back rank, mate? I think probably, yes. Let's just stick in a cheeky h3 and create some loft. Actually, no. My bishop on h6. I've just seen that on the screen. Bishop on h6, guard c1. But it's sensible anyway. What have you done? That. Have you? Okay, well, I'm going to do this with check. Defended square. Ding dong. Merrily on high. And he's also defended the b7 pawn, for what it's worth. Okay, and now I'm going to push d4. I do bishop c4 check. And you're in somewhat of a crossfire there. And I think e7 is the only square for the king. I then have queen c5 check. And the net tightens. But it's... There's something about moving... Moving the bits. There's so much more... What the... Ecky thump is this? What's that on there? Check. <clears throat> Two minutes, 14. Don't have to be a dick now. Okay, this is forced. We knew this. This is fine. Okay, queen c5. He's got nothing. Block with a rook, that's it. Game over. Queen takes, mate. Isn't it? But there's a different quality to playing in 3D than there is 
on not it it feels more meaningful as well somehow and thank you to our sponsor chestnut tech for the free board that i got for my 50th birthday But I never promised to give them a good review. Just said, send me a board. I'll, I promise I'll review it. Didn't promise I'd like it. I think it's curtains. Boom. Boom. Brilliant. Like that. One by designation. And there we go. Okay. Um, so I'm not going to analyze this. Not right now. Because I can't analyze it. Well, I mean, I can do a regular analysis with my guest account, but let's not do that. Very enjoyable game. Feel a bit of a twat for uh, missing the hanging rook, but in fact, it worked out pretty well in the end. So, um, in fact, go on, sod it. Let's, let's flip over. I'm gonna flip over to, um, oh, okay. So let's go chess my profile. There we go, 34 moves, let's analyze. You can see my, my blitz history there. A little bit about how well did we play? Did I play 1500, 1600? 87.9 with one mistake. Nineteen thirty-two. Good vintage. And I played the middle game well. Got a star in the middle game. That's really good. I mean, opponent played well, actually, for this. Right, what was my mistake? Ah, oh, recapturing of the pawn instead of the bishop. Yeah, okay. It made a one-pawn difference to the game, but hey, hey, hey. Opponent actually made no blunders. Opponent had a miss. Which is at this point. Ah, okay. Okay, so what happened here? I took which is the best move. I didn't blunder a rook at all. I was teasing you the whole time. Okay. And now we take, and I'm hitting the other rook. This is the point, okay. Right, I'm gonna go through this. I'm going to update my, uh, my training regime because there's definitely some good points in this game, including the trapped queen. And that's gotta be an absolute beauty, hasn't it? All right, leave it there. Wish me luck for tonight. Thanks for watching. See you later.